Cranberry juice? It's a natural diuretic. My girlfriend drinks it when she's got a period. What do you get, your period? You know, violence is 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 an all is, is an encompassing word. It, it, it's, it's a word that takes in so much. Um, it depends on the world you're depicting. It depends on the audience you're aiming for. And then there's the issue of your responsibility to the story and to the world that you're depicting. And if you're going to go on a realistic basis, let's say where world I came from, um, uh, although it was good, hardworking uh, people. Trying to trying to trying to uh, raise a family respectably, there was a lot of organized crime, and I saw a lot of violence where I grew up. I just saw it. It was part of me. Um, uh, when it came time for me to make movies, I knew those films were not for children. That was a time before, that was, that was a time with the rating system, but it was before cable television. I knew those films would never be shown on television. And if they were, they'd be edited to the point where they were unintelligible and I couldn't care less because I wouldn't want them shown at 6 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night for a child of mine to see. All right, let's kiss goodnight to that pretty young face of yours. <laughs> The violence that I, that I have in my pictures, um, and again, you know, be self-criticized. People say, sure, you know, the kind of violence you do, you think is all right. But if anybody else does it, you're, you're, you're criticizing them. But what we're talking about, the violence in my films, is not pleasant. It's not pleasant. And I've just finished the film. Now, I'm working on this film right now, which is very violent. And it's not pleasant at all. And uh, it's not, uh, it, you, you reap what you sow in the, in the stories I'm trying to tell. And I don't know any other way to show it. And, it and, and there's also to deal with the very, very dangerous aspect of um, that, that adrenaline one has is young, that, that uh, could be, uh, uh, could be um, uh, expressed many different ways, uh, and, and, and some sort of excitement, whether it's sexual excitement or violence or whatever. There's that, there's that danger that one has to know. That's part of what it is being human, especially young. And that could go wrong. And when it goes wrong, this could happen. Now, the world I came from, the world I knew, or aspects, I should say, of the world I knew, well, that was, a, was a valid form of expression. That's the, world I'm, 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 uh, that's the world I'm... That's the human condition. That is the human condition, and it's tragic. And, and it's, it's set up in such a way that we'll, it will do us in as a species if we don't learn about it. I don't put it up there for people to enjoy it, you know? And if they are enjoying it, they catch themselves enjoying it, and the characters pay for it. I watched the characters pay for it, particularly in Goodfellas um, and in Raging Bull, uh, in Raging Bull, in this film, the, the Departed, which I just finished also.
to say about it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's horrible. But yeah, at the same time, it, no, I don't think it has anything to do with that. But, it, it, but this has gone back all the way down to Shakespeare's days. All right, when there's violence in the street, you know, the cry becomes, blame the playmakers. And, uh, you know, I actually, I think that's a very facile argument to, to, to pin on something that's so real-life tragic. Mr. Hitchcock, there's been a lot of comment over the years about the social impact of films on audiences, their influence for good or evil. Do you think that films have much real influence, or is it merely a momentary thing? I think the main it's a momentary thing. I suppose if one stood outside any movie house, most of the faces are either giggling or smiling, even when they come out of a horror picture. You don't see them coming out pondering deeply. I think uh, the immediate reaction to a film is, is quite different from a later reaction. Uh, I'm sure that there are certain things in films which affect fashions. You know, the famous occasion when Clark Gable left a T-shirt off or something and the sails fell off enormous. It happened one night. That's that was, right, yeah. yeah. So you don't really feel that sociologists have much of a foundation for saying that films that record the criminal impulse or television shows that concentrate on crime have a lasting influence on the viewer? I would say it had an influence on sick minds, but not on healthy minds. Uh, it reminds me of when I made Psycho, a man was arrested in uh, Los Angeles for murdering three women. And it's, uh, he is alleged to have said that he murdered the third woman after seeing Psycho. So I was called by the newspapers for a comment. And my only question was, what film did he see before he murdered the second woman? And perhaps before he murdered the first woman, maybe he'd just drunk a glass of milk. Fair enough. And a little boy came up to me once in the street, about a seven-year-old boy, and said, Mr. Hitchcock, in that murder scene in Psycho, what did you use for blood? Chicken blood? I said, no, chocolate sauce. Okay, and he went on his way. Well, See, the you. operative phrase was, what did you use for blood? He didn't believe it. It was never meant to be an adventure. It was meant to be a recreation a kind of a documentation of the closest I could get to the experiences of those who fought there on June 6th. I really felt that that all the research that we did really brought that scene to life because it was ugly, because it was honest, and it had to be ugly because that's the way it was. And uh, um, I kept fearing that I was making it so ugly the film would never be able to get into a movie theater in America. It would be labeled NC-17 and nobody would ever see it. And I was hoping upon hope that the historic relevance of that landing on that day, which basically saved Western democracy, Western civilization was saved that day by, by, by these kids that landed on June 6th. I was hoping that that would allow younger people to come to a movie that would certainly be rated R, but I think had more to it than just um, the exploitation of World War II.
One of the arguments um, is violent movies and Hollywood lead to us to this kind of thing. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I don't entirely disagree, um, but I find it interesting to look at who says it. And interestingly enough, it's mostly the media who says it, meaning the media get out of their responsibility again, because we're talking about fiction, and um, it is unmistakably fiction. And and um, to claim that you could confuse it with reality is is somewhat far-fetched. I'm not saying it doesn't have an influence, mind you. I'm really not. Yet, what I consider the really uh, significant and dangerous aspect is the sense of, uh, sensationalization of it. And movies don't sensationalize. They just tell. Who is it who sensationalizes it? It's the media. So we have to keep these a little bit apart and look at them separately and not just meddle everything up and point fingers uh, at the opposite side. Uh, I find that very important.